So this week's run up is brought to you by the letter R. This first one is a simple Kickstarter providing a breakout for the MS5837 pressure sensor, which seems to be quite a nice sensor. I haven't used this one before, but it has 0 to 30 bar range sampling and up to 500 microseconds at 24 bit resolution, and only draws 0.6 microamps. Hmm, nice. It's an expensive sensor, but you get what you pay for. MakeBlock is another one of those plug and play block type connecty thingies. They connect magnetically and talk to each other via small pogo pins. They have a fairly complete list of modules from Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, to buttons, knobs, voice recognition, to cameras and more sensors that you can poke a stick at, to motor drivers, buzzers and also displays. Programming is via Blockly or MBlock, but they also have released an open SDK which plays nice with Node and JavaScript. They also offer a cloud service. Looks to be one of the better ones out there. Cansi is a fancy name for a Wi-Fi based mains power controller. It's a pretty simple concept. It sits in between the mains power and the device you want to control. So that means you can retrofit it to a light switch and have automatic control. My big concern is that their campaign assumes that you can DIY your own mains wiring, which in almost every country is illegal to do unlicensed. Keegan is an all-in-one motor and controller with inbuilt Wi-Fi, LiPo battery, IMU, rotary encoder and has accurate position, speed and torque control. So you can also use it as an input device to program movement of another motor. They are pretty expensive, but pretty good for what you're getting. Peby is... Oh great! You included another robotic pet sitter. Okay, so what's so good about this one? Oh look, it's just a ball that moves around with camera and a Wi-Fi. Oh a laser. Cute so you can annoy your pets as well. About as useful as this weather we're having. Okay then, moving on to Indiegogo. Is there anything remotely interesting? Oh, there's a Lightyear Pi Zero, $6 US. Nice. This is a very small Linux based board, similar to the previous Lightyear Pi, but has the all winner A3 Cortex A7, which is capable of running from one gigahertz down to 24 megahertz, using only 0.1 microamps. Linux kernel is at 4.10, even better, and has onboard SD slot that can also house a Wi-Fi board. Has 27 GPIO ports with the usual complement of UARTs, SPI, ITC, MIPI CSI and RGB LCD. This is one nice board, but remember it has only 64 megabytes of RAM. So like the Omega 2 and several other boards, you'll have to get used to working with low memory. Over at Crowd Supply, there's a small e-paper display in pre-launch called the Paperino. It contains an accelerometer that can wake up your MCU for ultra low power applications. Then there's the aeroscope in pre-launch which is, oh, a bit of plastic with an alligator clip attached. Why don't they put more information on these pages? Anyway, there's a whole bunch of new boards being released but haven't yet had any price tag attached. I tend to not put these in the weekly roundup but a lot of these will be displayed at the Embedded World 2017 in Nuremberg, Germany. So check out their website when you get the chance. Anyway, over at Tindy, the weather hasn't dampened anyone's spirits. There's another blast from the past. This is probably the most accurate ZX80 clone I've seen in a long while. It's pretty expensive, but if you like to reminisce, there you have it. And sometimes you just need to have screw terminals on your Pi. This one does just that for you. Now this is an unusual but really useful idea. Wonder Beeps allows you to control up to 16 outputs based on an ordinary tone being generated. So it's like audible frequency range wireless remote control. This means you can control anything via anything that carries audio waves. Mobile, landline, telephone or even whistling if you want. An interesting idea. And seems the weather hasn't stopped Adafruit from adding some new products. Although they are having shipping delays at the moment. The TPL5110 is a small standalone power timer. So it'll sit there drawing only 20 microamps until the time kicks in and powers up whatever device you have attached. You set the wake up time from either 100 milliseconds up to 2 hours. There's also a high density 8x8 RGB LED board using the Dotstar LEDs which are driven over SPI. A much better way to control LEDs than the WS2812 method. They also have the Pimeroni arcade hat in stock that gives you everything you need for arcade glory. It's very similar to the Pi Zero bonnet from a couple of weeks ago. And something for your new Pi Zero W, some protoboard space. 
If you have some industrial projects in mind, then this product seems to have everything you need. It's based on the Atmega 2560, but also contains an ESP8266 and 2.4 inch TFT screen. It's expensive, but you're getting a fairly robust platform that is designed for industrial applications. Over at DF Robot, there's a small XB module based on the MediaTek MT7681 Wi-Fi module. It supports OTA programming and also access point mode. Over where it's probably sunny and dry, unlike here, Banggood have the X800 SATA enclosure for the Raspberry Pi, which allows you to attach a 2.5 inch drive and power your Pi at the same time. This beginner kit is pretty expensive, but for what you get in it, will last you for a very long time. You get an Arduino Uno, Mega 2560, Nano version 3 and Uno, along with a bucket load of extras that actually ends up being pretty good value. While Ellie Crow have a small 0.69 inch OLED driven by ITC and powered from either 3.3 or 5 volts. Also an alternative version of Adafruit's VL53L0 laser range sensor. And yet another board based on the MediaTek MT7688 SOC which is used in the Omega 2 and a bunch of other boards hitting the market. If you're in need of any power monitors, then IC Station have a bunch of them in stock in various ranges and using either direct inline sensing or via current transformer. So that's it for this week's roundup. It seems the bad weather has affected everything. So thanks for watching and see you next week. Has this rain stopped yet? Oh man.